the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. It's the best breakfast show in town. Coffee in your cup and Joy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always the best bet on Joy 99.7 FM. You better believe it. And it's two past nine. Thank you for staying with us. So much more coming up. We're going to El Mbele. We're going to figure out what's going on there. As the DCE, uh, who was arrested in connection with some disappearing excavators, uh, he, among others, were arrested, by the way. So uh, we'll be finding out what the latest is, who has been arrested for what and what's to happen next. That's all to come. Uh, uh, but uh, before that, have you registered your surfline numbers yet? In line with the National Communications Authority's directive to get all SIM cards re-registered, Surfline has demarcated special registration points close to your community to help you register your MiFi's and routers. You can also visit any Surfline shop near you to register with your Ghana card. Remember, no registration, no service. Register your Surfline numbers today to avoid disconnection. Surfline, better together. You know, Kojo, this is one of the things we don't spend time talking about with the re-registration mm. routers. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to do them all. Yeah. It's very easy to do your phone and forget you have to yeah. re-register your router. Uh, in fact, I have a I have broadband mm. um, at home. I need to. I, I'm wondering whether um, the SIM card in that also needs to be re-registered. Be? Yeah, it, it has. Must. It must. The yeah. detail, the procedure for it is a, bit, a, a little bit for separate. Oh, okay. I don't know the phone That's number the for it. So, so how do I register? Oh, no, you should take the SIM. I have to, to take the SIM out. One of the yeah, places you they see, would help that's you. that's also the issue. We'll, we'll, but let me tell you about APSA, and then I guess maybe <laughs> sometime we'll get into this issue. <laughs> hmm. uh, but getting cash on the go from an APSA ATM is now so easy, even when you do not have your contactless APSA debit card with you. For the first time in Ghana, you can withdraw money from any APSA ATM with the APSA mobile banking app using a QR code. It is easy, safe, and convenient. Simply open your APSA mobile app, select ATM QR Cash to scan the QR code on the ATM screen, follow the prompts, and get your cash out. That's another digital innovation that gets things done. That's Africanacity, and that's certainly APSA. Download the APSA mobile banking app now to get started or visit the nearest APSA branch to sign up. And on that note, we head to the Western region. I have never said anywhere that I handed over excavators to the police. Indeed, I'm the complainant in this whole issue of missing excavators. I complained to the Ghana Police Service that I requested policemen to keep watch over two excavators that have been pounded from an illegal mining site that was supposed to be transported to the second day for prosecution by the Attorney General as, as a exhibit. So in this case, if the police is investigating, I have a lot to offer because <clears throat> so far I've given the police enough details that should allow them, that should enable them to conduct whatever investigation that the police want to conduct to find the excavators. My interest is that those two excavators have to be found. Because excavators, uh, for heaven's sake, are not like the bosses of matches, which can just be put in somebody's pocket and disappear. So, so, so in less than 24 hours after you gave that directive, the excavators are nowhere to be found? Yeah, so what happened was that the police put the that, from 2 p.m. to that, 6 p.m. That's shocking. I mean, the excavator that we're talking about now, it's not some sort of a salon car that, well, someone could just um, make away with. Yeah, that, that's the source of the investigation now, because uh, according to the police, uh, at the time, they didn't have enough men. So the division commander who dispatched two constables to keep watch over the excavators from 2 to 6 p.m., they left the excavators. Yeah, so that's um, that's from an interview granted us by the DCE, who is uh, heading to court this morning. It makes the interesting point that he's the complainant in this missing excavator case, but uh, he was arrested. Uh, so w what was he charged with? Was he charged with the disappearance of these excavators or something else? 
uh, in Athalia Kwanza joins us right now. She's our Western Regional Correspondent. She's had our she's had our attention with this story since it started. In Athalia, good morning and thanks for your time. Good morning, Kujo. Okay, so first of all, the latest. Uh, who is going to court and what have they been charged with? Yes, Kujo. So um, this morning, the DCE, Kosti Bunzuzo, and then four others are in court. Um, according to the lawyer for Kosti Bunzuzo, Salome Erika Abeka, um, Kosti Bunzuzo has been given five charges. That is conspiracy to assault, assault. Hello, do we do we still have Nathalia on the line? Okay, we're, we're going to um, we're, we're going to reconnect with Nathalia. That line was a bit choppy; uh, it was hard to hear her. Um, so let's work on that and then bring her back because she was giving us a full update of the charges leveled against the DCE of. Um, uh, so I, I think I we have Nathalia now. Can you hear me? Yes, Kojo, I can hear you. Perfect. Okay, so let's let's start again from the beginning. Mm. So, Kujo, um, five people are in court today, four people plus the district chief executive, Kwesi Bonzo. Um, the, the DC's um, lawyer says that uh, he has been given five charges. That is conspiracy to assault, assault itself, and then resisting arrest with two counts. That's what she said yesterday. With the four, we do not know what their charges are, but both of them are here in court. Could you someone would ask? that uh, the police indicated that they had arrested three people plus um, the D.C. So how come they are five now? Mm. Yesterday at the police headquarters in Sekendi here in the western region, we were all there with one guy. His, his name is Robert Amua. Whilst we were speaking, uh, they called him that the D.C. is... The DC is calling him Aspers, where he was being detained. He went and never came back. Later, we understand that he was also asked to write a statement, and then he's also um, a suspect in this case. Apparently, he's the one who first saw the excavator when the police retrieved it and then gave a tip off. Mm. So that's how come we have five people, um, four in police custody, and then the DC on bill now. So, so, uh, do we have any idea where these excavators are? Well, Kojo, um, yesterday they brought one of the excavators, brand new, as um, the, just like the one we had seen um, from the DC's pictures as being missing. One of them was brought to the police headquarters, and it has been kept there. The other one, I understand that the police are still in search of it. And so that's what I can say well, about the excavators. Who brought the brand new one? Who brought it back? Who? The police, yesterday in the morning, just like we had seen a press release from the police saying that they had gone on several operations and had retrieved one of the excavators in a forest in Ellenbele. And so in the morning, they had gone bringing the excavator, and that was when the arrest of the Honorable DC came in. And so from what my sources tell me, the DC had a tip off that the excavators which has gone missing has been sent to Takrade. Um, so he followed up, and then at a junction around um, in Elembele, within the community, his district, he, you know, traced and then stopped uh, whoever was driving the excavator hmm. towards Takrade. Unfortunately for him, he did not see that there were two other cars, one pickup and Nizan, following the excavator, and then I understand from sources that the, there were police officers in it, but they were not in uniform. So right. these were the police officers bringing the excavator to Takrade. From the sources, again, Kojo, they told me that the Honorable DC went out and then identified himself as he is the DC for Ellen Bell, and he wants to know where they are taking the excavator. So he took out his phone to take pictures of the excavator. And that's when the scaffold happened, and then he was bundled into the vehicle and then brought here in Second D. He was at the Second D headquarters from 8 a.m. yesterday. We left there around 8.30 p.m. in the mm -hmm. evening. Interesting. Interesting. And so this is how he ended up being charged with assault and resisting arrest. Yes, and conspiracy to assault with two other counts yet to be known. Hmm. Okay, uh, uh, so so which of the five others have been charged with, uh, you know, uh, 
anything relating to the disappearance of those excavators? Look, the, the one, the lawyer for the DC did not make mention of it yesterday. This morning we are in court, the Takrade Secure Court A, eh? and this is when we would know the specific charges for her. She spoke of the charges being given to the DC yesterday in the evening. The other, she didn't make mention of any. Okay, well, we're hoping that uh, you stay on that for us. And um, Yeah, Ina, uh, um, did the police speak to you? Because I know that yesterday journalists were hanging around for a very mm. long time. Did you get a briefing from the police? Not at all. In the morning when the, um, the commander, the COP, the who came and then we tried to get some information, he said it frankly that uh, he's not speaking to the media. No one from the police spoke to us. So we were hanging there from 8 till 8.30 without the police engaging us. It was just the, the lawyer who had also even come in the morning but had not was not given the chance to meet with her, her clients. Later on, she came in the evening, was not given the opportunity to meet with her clients. But after speaking to the media, that's when she was called in and then she had opportunity to see her clients. So for the media, no, no one spoke to us from the police. Right. Uh, we also understand that a police officer has been interdicted following a, t a, a radio interview. Can you tell mm. us about that? Yes, Kojo. So the police officer who has been interdicted happens to be the divisional commander for Elembele, Dozi Holozi. And so um, it was on this same issue of missing excavators. You know how the DC has been, uh, has been on keen on it and the blame game of um, it is with the police, it is with the DC and all that. So it was one of those interviews with a TV station on Monday and the standard was why he was interdicted on Monday. Mm. Um, well, uh, we know that there will be more as the court case uh, begins shortly, so please stay with it for us. In Atalia Kwanza is our Western Regional Correspondent. Now, um, uh, Erasto Sasaridonko was uh, with us yesterday when we started this conversation. He's here right now because he has a lot of experience of um, the illegal mining in the Western region where his investigations have taken him on many occasions. Erastus, thanks for uh, making time for us again this morning. Good morning. Thank you very much, Kojo. All right. So this, to us, sounds like the most bizarre thing ever. Police officers and DCEs butting heads while excavators disappear and reappear. It's just magical. But I wonder whether to you this is just... Uh, <laughs> uh, this is in keeping with some of the findings that you have uncovered in your time in the Western region. I think uh, by now, uh, all the military guys and the uh, people who have been on the field, um, wh when you say you are shocked, they will be laughing, uh, wherever <laughs> they are. Uh, this is uh, normal on the field. In fact, where you find uh, uh, people in power at the local level, you know, conniving to, with the local uh, miners to hide equipment to do these things, it's very, very normal. And in fact, in some instances, when we were moving with the Interministerial Task Force, for example, before you get to the field, they've notified uh, whoever is mining there. Sometimes they hide the excavators within the forest. But you see, you can never hide such a machine because when it starts moving, it, it tracks itself. Mm. And so if you really want to check where it is, it's easy uh, to find. So these things are very normal where... Uh, in some instances, DCs, MCs are part of it. Police personnel are part of it. The military, some of them are compromised. It's, it's, it's very, very normal on the field. Hmm. I have to say, I mean, thinking about the size of an excavator and how, you know, it, it can just disappear. Well, 500 of them disappeared and nothing happened. Uh, so it, it, yeah. I, I think there is that um, uh, uh, nobody is really interested in finding missing excavators because if they are, it's easy to to, to track them. Hmm. Hmm. L um, listen, tell us how how widespread is the involvement of law enforcement, as appears to be the case. Uh, here in Elembele. How widespread is the involvement of law enforcement in Galamse in the West? Kojo, uh, at a point in time, we went to Ankwaso uh, Forest. 
where some people were mining within the forest enclave. And we uh, happened to meet two police officers who were there. This, this is about uh, 2018. Uh, two police officers who were with the official vehicle of the Ankwasu police in the forest protecting this miner. It's, it's commonplace. It's, at the local level, there are some who go there to take money. There are some who use the opportunity uh, to go in there and extort money from uh, these local miners. Mm. There are those who are also directly involved uh, with the mining itself. There are police officers we've met on the ground who have concessions uh, at the various levels. Uh, so, yes, it's, it's commonplace. Mm. And... Uh, there are military men who have also been killed on the field because they went in there to extort money uh, from the uh, miners as well. There are wow. those who are also protecting individual miners, like the ones we found at CNJ Alaska uh, back then, uh, the ones we found in the Odaho Forest recently, hmm. about 30 armed uh, military men. The recent engagement with the Deputy Minister for Land, some chiefs came forward to tell him that indeed, there are still military officers in the Cobra Forest, as we speak, protecting hmm. miners there. Wow. And so it's commonplace on the field. Hmm. Well, we've got five arrests plus the DC himself. Um, does this seize you with any kind of optimism that perhaps on this occasion uh, something concrete will be done? Well, I like the uh, uh, boldness of the police in uh, trying to arrest the DC himself. It doesn't really quite happen often. And so that, that's, that's a good signal, but uh, we need to get to the bottom of it um, if we can get independent investigators to go in. Um, to what extent is the police themselves involved? Uh, to what extent is the DC involved in this whole thing? I think that detail uh, should also come up. Yeah. But Kodo, um there have been other areas. You wanted to know which areas they are mining currently. Mm -hmm. On the river tunnel in Samra Boy, uh, there's active mining as we speak in those areas. When you pass through the Diaso Ayamfri Road, by the roadside, Wasa area, uh, you have active mining. In some instances, deep excavation within the town itself is visible from the roadside. And so, um, if really authorities want to fight this, as we speak, they are there, and mm -hmm. they are mining. They call it the Wasamai mining. They told me point blank that they do not have permits. They they are paid eighty five thousand cities to uh, try to get it regularized, but they haven't. But mm -hmm. they still have to uh, mine, and they are in it. And so this should not be difficult to trace if indeed um, authorities are listening and they, they they really want to do something about it. Mm. Erastus, I want to thank you for your time and uh, for, again, uh, enlightening us on this all-important issue. Um, you know this issue about mining within the town? Mm -hmm. Not too long ago, there was news about uh, a relocation of a magistrate, uh, the Nkofu District Court, mm -hmm. uh, because there was mining not too far from the office. Mm. And there was, again, a back and forth Minerals Commission issue in a report investigating the matter. Also, just to say that the police also gave an update yesterday mm. about five Chinese arrested in connection with the Lembele missing excavators. Surprise, surprise. So this five seem to be different from the five, the other including five, yeah. the, the, the DCE. DCE is five, yeah. Exactly. The, the, the thing is, I don't know why they are not speaking to media people explaining the, the in terms of the update and, and in terms of the charges except to say well if they appear in court then you yeah. know you know the chat the, the the charges that we've slapped them it, this is something that we should get regular updates on i i still can't figure out how a complainant uh turns to be the accused in this matter <laughs> well um, he's accused of something other than what he complained about so he's accused of assault and uh, conspiracy, conspiracy to, assault. to assault and resisting arrest. And then but he complained that there are three other charges that we don't know. Yes, yes. Mm. So we, yeah. But he complained about the uh, missing, excavators. missing excavators. And the possible complicity of the police people in that particular area. Exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, let's take a I few steps back. Mm -hmm. This is the same area 
where illegal miners were arrested on the concession of Adamus Mine, taken to court. And people went to the court attempting to free these illegal miners. This is the same area. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in mm -hmm. court magistrate court that mm -hmm. we are talking about here. So it tells you, and if you have heard the consistent complaints from mining firms in the area, that every single time a concession is being taken over by illegal miners, active players in the community are watching and not doing anything about it. They are basically goading them on, including those with representation in, in that particular area. Mm. In fact, when you get an illegal miner arrested, the people who try to come and beg are chiefs and sometimes people who are representing the people in the area. Mm. Are the ones who are insisting that let them go or find them a different place. It is perhaps the only area that consistent calls are being made for people to be given more lands for community mining, which is almost what we are talking about here. Right. So if they are invading, uh, what they call it, mining sites of mining firms, if they are that brazen in doing it to the extent that they can go to the court and seek to freeze all of their own who are standing trial for illegal mining, clearly it has gotten out of hand in the area. Luckily, this issue to do with excavators is just bring it up. What has been simmering in that particular mm -hmm. district for God knows how long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without the proper attention, not only from the regional end, but even from the national officers of this yeah. country. So you know what, Raymond, I'm thinking that this current investigation, this issue surrounding the DCE, the district police commander, I don't think the Western Region Police should be investigating this and leading it. We brought Aisha one to Accra, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and transferred the case because mm -hmm. we need like an independent body to investigate. The problem is that in the update that the police gave, they actually said in paragraph six, we wish to commend the regional and all the teams involved in the operations for their continuous selflessness and patriotism. So, and uh, this is a statement issued from uh, the Public Affairs Directorate yeah. here in Accra. Yeah. So it would appear that even in Accra, mm -hmm. they believe that the the Elembele police yeah, are being right selfless thing. and patriotic. It, so, I, so it, meanwhile, they are implicated it, by it, the complaint. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so really, uh, uh, are we well, expecting? Well, the complaint and ten accused person. No, he's accused of something else. So, okay. uh, but we I'm don't know saying the three that other charges. Uh, we don't Could know. Be related. But the point I get is, your point. The point is the charges we know of are for something else. Yeah. And the issue here is that how can anyone expect uh, an impartial investigation when the investigators themselves, their their institution, is implicated? Mm. How can we expect the investigation? To be impartial. I think that's why Dominic Kaine said what has been the standard is that when, when two very relevant institutions like the police and the DC's office have a problem, mm. the national office, not of the police, either the presidency or somebody at national security sends a different team mm. to go and do impartial mm. report. A report is sent back, then they act on the report. Mm. So this is regardless of what the police say they are doing with the ADC. Sure. But an independent team will be on the ground mm. investigating the very issues that both sides are complaining because about. Because that's what we need We need yeah. for this issue to so be So there's no cover-up. Really. Yeah. So it's not made to look like, so far as I have the force of the state behind me, I can do whatever I want with it. And the issue dies there. Because ideally, we are still not dealing with the main issue. Mm. Up, as we speak, there is illegal mining happening in Nembele. Why is it happening? Mm. Why have we not stopped it? Who is responsible for stopping it? Why is it continuously happening? The, the, the excavators we are talking about, what were they for? Because they are, they are supposed to have been retrieved mm. from illegal mining Where sites. Where did we retrieve it from? Yes. Where is the other excavator? Who is doing the illegal mining because there? Because there were two excavators. We've gotten yeah. one. Where is the other one? Mm. Still. In whose hands did we find the first one? Mm. In fact, from our history of retrieving excavators, this is very, so much success. 50% retrieval <laughs> is so much success. Yeah, so, so guys, we couldn't the, do that much. Guys, there's something here that I want us to pay attention to. So this statement from the police uh, released yesterday, I believe, um, it, it says they've arrested five Chinese people. Yeah. Xi Zhong Qi or something like that. Wei Lin Xi, Huang Qian, Huang Qian Li, uh, Li Jiang Wen, and Huang Qian Sheng, right? Um, and they were all hiding out in the Siama. And you are saying that this is an extra five. 
yes. on top of an yes. original yes. five. Mm. So that's 10 Chinese people arrested no, in this. No, the DC is people, they are not Chinese. They are not Chinese. DC so these are the first men. five Chinese. Yes. Okay, so five Chinese people mm. arrested in relation to this, these two disappearing yeah. um, excavators. That's five in this instance. Cast your mind back. The Ghanaian Times, for some time, almost every day, there are pictures of Chinese people are being arrested. That's true. Chinese people, Chinese people, Chinese people, Chinese people. Why are they prosecuted? But where are they? These people that were arrested, where are they right now? Why are they I, prosecuted? I, I, my understanding is that we only have a couple of Chinese people in prison yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. So where are the rest of them? Where are they? Going where are they being held? Are they going through prosecution? What's happening to their cases? This is a lot of cases. That's true. What's happening to these cases? Where are they? Are they being kept somewhere? Here in this country, where? Who is where? representing? Them? Who is representing them? I mean, I mean, I'm sure, as would happen in Ghana, in, in, in the, if, for example, in China, a Ghanaian is arrested, the Ghanaian embassy will be aware. Mm -hmm. They would, you know, be involved. They will be ensuring that there's representation or there's due process or whatever they, they can do in those circumstances. So here, no doubt, these arrests are not being done on the blind side of the Chinese government. They will be aware that these people have been arrested when it's publicly announced. So where are they? Where are they? I'm curious. Where are we keeping all of these Chinese people we keep arresting over and over again? Is someone even checking the names to see if some of these are not re-arrests <laughs> and re-re-re-arrests? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they have Ghana cards mm -hmm. as non-resident citizens. Is it just a group of five particular Chinese guys mm -hmm. who keep getting arrested and released and arrested and released? What's going on? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Where are the Chinese we keep arresting? I think those are relevant questions. And the other group that has also been very quiet on this matter is the Immigration Service. They have not been up to date with the information they're supposed to provide on some of these things. Because the police is insisting they will go to the, them. As for the status of these uh, uh, Chinese operatives in the area. So it then suggests that Hojo, we might not know these Chinese first and foremost. We might have just chanced upon them in the Elembele district. And the police, when they, they arrested them, so now how to find their status. Possibly, I'm not even in the police system, so they have not been arrested before. Okay, now, so but all of this could have been answered if, if we had forthcoming information from the police and the irrelevant agencies involved. If you look at the statement that the police issued, they say that they are in contact with the immigration service yes. for details of the person they've arrested. Brilliant. Yeah. To help with the uh, investigation investigations of this particular matter. I mean, at some point, we should agree that the fight against legal mining has gotten out of hand. We do not have a full grip on it. In fact, we do not even know what we are doing as we speak. Mm. We are basically have scattered efforts across the country and pretending to fight it. Mm. And the examples of pretending to fight it is that, Kojo, we were not in this country unaware that Lembele is happening. And not only Lembele, you know the other areas that uh, Russell just mentioned, which presupposes that for most of the major water bodies in, uh, in, in, the, in the Western region, there's massive illegal mining happening there. Have you heard the regional minister on it? Have you heard a team from that area saying that we are fighting the big time? And that we have deployed this number of people on that ground and actually fought this this much? No, not until now. In fact, I've been following that, but I've not been hearing that. What does it tell you about what's happening there? Is it that people are actively, strongly fighting? Who is the mining district officer there? Because every district mining office has a leader who's an inspectorate deficient officer, whose responsibility is to make sure that only legal mining is happening in these mm. areas. Why are those regulatory institutions never, ever functioning properly? And I know that okay. when illegal miners are arrested, chiefs mm. go and even come as far as coming to the uh, headquarters of the IGP to come and beg mm. that they are released. Chiefs are begging for the release of illegal miners. The chiefs who are supposed to prevent abuse, custodians of the land, mm. the people who, who are supposed to protect us of the water bodies in these areas, they are destroying your water bodies, but you side with the people who are doing the wrong thing. Mm. That Then come to beg. So it, it tells you, who is the member of parliament? Uh, Emmanuel Kofi Amabua. What is his position on illegal mining? What does That's he say MP. when people are arrested in connection with illegal mining? It cannot be that we are all pretending this just happened out, mm. out of nothing. Because this mining might have been happening for a long time. You know, yesterday I listened to the president of the Small Scale Miners Association. Yeah. He seemed to have a lot of information, a lot of revelations. You know, we're sitting here thinking that uh, Aisha Wan was arrested perhaps when, he, when she was coming through the border, the Togo-Ghana yes. border. The revelations that he made, and I haven't heard from any government official. So Contradicting that. Exactly. 
that, oh, she was actually arrested not because she was mining illegally or involved in Galamsey. It was because she was in a fight with someone who is living <laughs> in the house where she used to live before she was first deported. And that she actually returned to Ghana within six months. With the intent to repossess her possessions. Deportation. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. So it's, you know, they're all like a lot of, you know, the NDC minority in parliament has been calling for a full disclosure mm -hmm. on her deportation. I am thinking really that if we need answers, unless we're pretending yeah. that we need answers, if we need answers, there are people on the ground who can actually point you to the people who are doing illegal mining. That's true. Yeah, we and don't we know want them. to know. And it's, you we know, don't want to know. Because, I mean, it's that pretense that actually gets me worried. They, they only soupy once in a while to go and do mm. things of this sort. Mm. Sometimes, even whose illegal mining concession we invade is dependent on what we want to do. So, there are two adjoining illegal mining places. <laughs> we'll choose one and leave the other. <laughs> I mean, what, what kind of system wow. is this? And yet, we are basically pretending all through that, oh, we are doing well. We have put watercrafts on the water bodies. We are making sure they are there 24 hours. We are making sure that the security men, the military, you just be told, even military men are compromised in this mm. matter. Let's get our listeners involved, okay? Maybe, you know, they are also seeing things a bit differently from, from how we are seeing it. But in terms of this Elembele issue, what is brewing, DCE, complainant, now becomes the suspect, <laughs> the person who's been charged, who's mm -hmm. been taken to court. Uh, is it clear enough how this fight against Galamse is progressing? Give us a call on 0302-216-541 or 055-111-997, Kojo. Mm, yes, I'd love to hear what you have to say on this, uh, this fight against Galamse. Uh, is it going or coming? Uh, how hopeful are you that uh, we will be able to save those who are, in fact, uh, co committing genocide by poisoning our water? Coming from other countries where they have clean water to come and poison ours. And those who are here helping them to do it. Mm. And those in power who can stop it but refuse to do so. And those who, who, who have been uh, paid to regulate the sector, but somehow are unable to do so. And those who we rely on to protect us through law enforcement, who somehow are the ones implicated in breaking the laws. How? How are we going to fix this if this is our current situation? Hamza is in Ashaiman. Hi, Hamza. Good morning. Good morning, Kojo. It's been a long time. It has, oh, my brother. Thanks for calling. Oh, welcome. Oh, thank you for good work you are doing. Bless you. Kwajo, yesterday our new striker uh, score hatred. Are you aware of that? Uh, what? Sorry? Our new striker, Barcelona new striker score hatred. <laughs> are you aware of that? <laughs> well, you know, I don't follow the, the minor teams. I'm a Swansea <laughs> fan. Hey, you, know. <laughs> you don't follow the minor team. Hamza so is always trying to get Swansea is bigger than Barcelona. Anyway, <laughs> let's go to Aisha one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kwajo, um, mm. it's very surprising, you know. Me, I am. I believe that um, Aisha Wan wasn't uh, deported. He wasn't. He was, she was not. She was not deported. She was in this country. And one thing that uh, it, it, that one thing that is disheartening is that you see the very people that are telling us that they are fighting um, what they call Galamse. Mm. They, they are just doing it for Ghanaians. They are behind Galamse. Yeah, behind Galamse, do you remember this uh, this obvious mantra, the party in Yaska, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this clearly is what they have planned from opposition, and they are all exhibiting it correctly. And, you know, I learned Aisha, Aisha Wan, who was uh, their financier. Of, they, okay, she well, financed uh, let, let's only stick to what we can substantiate, you know? Let's stick to what we can substantiate. Well, 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 but everything shows clearly that <laughs> it, it, me, I won't doubt this. You know, I will just not doubt this. Hmm. Our president is aware of this. And then we, one thing is, if going forward, if we want to fight this head on, 
Hello? Oh, I think we lost Hamza there. Uh, let, let's stay in Accra and talk to Nyanzu. Hi, Nyanzu. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Kojo. What's then? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Good, good. For the first time, I feel pressed to contribute on, on, on to, your, to your program. Wow, wow. Welcome yes, to the yes. family. Yes, I, I am, I am an in, a proud indigenous of Elembele, resident uh -huh. in Accra. Uh -huh. and, and I must say, in the past a couple of weeks, uh, we've, we have all been heavily sad for the bad press that Elembele has gathered. Mm. But you see, anyone who has been keenly following uh, politics in Elembele knows the kind of forces that uh, Bunzu has been battling against. And so I will agree with Erastu Sassari Donko that uh, indeed there is more to this issue than meets the eye. Mm. I would not be surprised that there are some powerful forces behind this that would give a whole police commander the, the, the nerve to, to accost the arrest of, of a, a, a DC. And I also find some comical elements in all of this. Koyo, Eshe Bunzuda. Oh, Minshanda. The guy is a, a diminutive guy. Mm. The only thing that is strong and powerful about the guy is his intellect and, and his voice. In mm. fact, if you put him against a, a, a GHS student, I shudder to think the, what the outcome would be. <laughs> and so the police must spare some of these comical you know, games that you know, they are making the, the, the force come to be. Mm. But like, I'll conclude that there is more than meets the eye on this issue. So let us all take time and follow it before we jump to conclusions. Thank you. Thank you, Nyanzu. That Nyanzu is a, a son of Elembele there. Uh, let's talk to Benjamin in Adenta. Is this our very own Ben? Yes, this is uh, your uh, very own Benjamin. Long time, Ben. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's always pathetic listening to the radio and the kinds of commentary that you hear. And I always see that we are always interested in talking I remember these programs are always done. Even you're talking about judgment debt. It's always here with us. So would we act? The CSOs, civil society organizations, they come and they always talk, talk, talk. But some of these organizations have millions of dollars in funding. They'll tell you it's private, but I disagree. It's not a private entity once you have donor money. So why wouldn't they fight these things in the courts. Well, our judges are buying vehicles, which I see to be a bribe, because a vehicle sold, or a vehicle bought for $150,000, is being sold to them for $5,000 in less than uh, two years. And so obviously they are muddied. So what do you do? You go to the international community. Climate change issues are there. Environmental uh, issues are there. You escalate these things because the president told you He's putting his presidency on the line. That means he cannot act. That means he's a two-plus bulldog himself. Because the president shouldn't put his presidency on any line. You are the commander-in-chief, and you do what is supposed to be done. The chiefs are compromised. When you speak, they will banish you, the Ghanaian, from their community. But the Chinese, the illegal miners, <laughs> destroying River Pra, Densu, among others, cannot be banished by these chiefs. It tells you clearly that you are losing the fight, or let me say the fight has already been lost. And we are paying so much for water. Because mm. now, Ghana Water must spend so much money to now give us clean water. And you are even drinking a lot of chemicals into your body. Mm. No wonder there are so many kidney cases in Ghana. Go to Kolebuk Dialysis Center and see the number of Ghanaians being killed. So what Ken Ashikbe was saying yesterday, which I agree with him perfectly, they, their intention is to wipe you off the surface of the earth. Can't you see it? And the chiefs are stupid bulldogs. Hmm. They cannot act. So what do we do? Where? Hello. Uh, I think we lost Benjamin. Uh, but uh, well, very forcefully made his point, didn't he? Thank you for calling us. Uh, let's talk to Albert in OEB. Hi, Albert. Good morning. Yeah, hello. Good, good morning. Mm, thanks for calling. You know, I look at it from another angle. Um, I think the problem in this country is that we have people, a lot of people who don't have values. Now, somebody don't go talk to me about primary values and secondary values. Secondary values being you've gone to school, you have your degree, you have your qualification and the like. Primary value being uh, integrity, honesty, selflessness, and those things. You see, the society, unfortunately, gradually is losing its moral fiber. And so the people who come in, into office, they come from within, from us, from society. The president said he was going to put his presidency on the line, obviously, from hindsight, he didn't mean it. 
all, all right. So I think that until we start inculcating values in our in, in the next generation from the school, from the homes, we're going to have these problems, you know, persistent because people are going to grow up, they're, they're going to go to school, they're going to become intelligent, they're going to become clever, and they're going to use their intelligence and their cleverness to, to rate the, the state, hmm. all right? But if there are people who have strong body systems, strong values, I think they would, they would, they would, they would they think twice, of course. We will have a society of angels, mm. but if there are people who, who, who have integrity, true integrity, honesty, they have these values, and, and, and selflessness and patriotism, sure. mm. I think that we will go far as a country. Otherwise, look, we are not going anywhere. Because see, even the institutions that are supposed to help fight corruption, the police, the military, you know, I've been listening to you, and I listened to Samson every Saturday, um, mm -hmm. what he did, uh, he did. Mm. And it, it, it's sad, all right, because the judiciary, everywhere, every almost every institution, is compromised. Yeah. Why? Because there are people there who do not have values. So I think we need to look at values in our educational system. Okay? Thank you, Albert. Well, that's, a, that's a, a, yet another perspective. He's taking a more of a bird's eye view of some of these problems. And uh, yeah, he, he might have a point there. Although I've always believed that values, values come from enforcement. I don't think people just choose on their own to be virtuous and good. People will do whatever they can get away with. So if you make them able to get away with less, then uh, they will uh, comply more. That's my view. Ishmael is in Abukobi. Hi, Ishmael. Good morning. Hey. My boss, son, how are you? The son of Amomiat. <laughs> hey. Ishmael, how's everything? It's great. And this is being very fast. Hmm. Could you? Yeah. Ishmael, uh, mm. can you walk away from the radio a little bit or turn I'll it do. Yeah. I'll do just that. Thank you. Could you have a problem in this country? Mm. The politicians are the major problem makers in this country. How many politicians are there don't don't own illegal money inside? We should do a respect retrospective accountancy. You will see, you'll be you'll be you'll be shocked. The politicians are there, they put people there to do these things. Mm. Look, I shall one we are talking about this matter two, three, four, five days, it will die off. Mm. Look at how we are suffering in this country. We have we have resources that we don't even want our own people to benefit. Yet some few people who come and call the whole thing to benefit themselves and their unborn families. What is happening to us? Mm. God has given us a big thing on look. We should clear all these politicians off, if it's possible. Then we sell Ghana off, and you just <laughs> mm. If we do that, I wonder if we'll still be able to afford to fill our fuel tanks. Ishmael <laughs> in Abukubi, thank you so much for calling us. In fact, thanks to all of you who called us today. We really appreciate it. Some very deep thoughts shared mm. there by our callers, as always. We appreciate it it very much it's the super morning show a little bit more after these football kukuda mene ni ade ba ufie go tv ada romanti dojo uwa